Eric? You can hear you, right? Okay, hear great. From audience. Well, uh, good morning to uh, Wenjo Kane faculty and staff. Uh, I'm delighted to be able to uh, share with you some background and history about uh, why Wenjo Kane is so special as, as a unique Sino US collaboration. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't see the audience right now, so I'll have to just uh, imagine uh, what I saw a few moments ago, which is I did notice one thing that students do a lot, which is that they don't sit in the front. So I always encourage people to sit in the front. Okay, I'm sure many of you know a little bit about the history of Kane University as a public state institution within, within the state. We are the most affordable public institution, something we're very proud of. We have about 16,000 very diverse student population. Uh, many of the students are the first in their family to attend college. Uh, we are a comprehensive university. We have a wide range of undergraduate degrees. And I'm proud to add that as of this year, we have a total of seven doctorate degrees. And uh, this past fall, we were recognized by the state as being a doctoral institution because we have uh, five or more doctoral programs. We have, are expanding our operations, not only the main campus in Union, New Jersey, which is not far from the Newark airport, but also a site in the southern part of the state as well as, of course, Wenzhou Kane, and we're also working on the northwest part of the state for something called Kane Highlands, focused on environmental and sustainability science. So I, I want to take a step back. Now, Eric, can everybody hear me okay? Eric? Yes, you can hear pretty well. Okay. But... Uh, don't hesitate to let me know if you can't hear me, because otherwise I'll just keep going, okay? All right, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, uh, the background of public accountability. Uh, it's a simple fact, certainly in the U.S., that there is skepticism about the value of the college degree. And over the 300 plus years since Harvard was established in 1636, especially in the past century, there's been an increased scrutiny as to how do we really know that students are learning? And of course, what evolved out of that discussion was uh, assigning letter grades in the classroom. Initially, it was only exit exams as students were graduating. And then around the turn of the century, about 120 years ago, letter grades began to become much more common. and. Uh, once the 1940s, 1950s came, it was uh, much more widely spread within the U.S. I'll talk a little bit about what assigning letter grades really means when it comes to assessment of student learning. Now, of course, within the U.S., we have uh, accreditors which evaluate universities as a whole. Uh, the region that we're in is referred to as middle states. The uh, Middle States Commission on Higher Education oversees over 500 institutions of higher learning, uh, and uh, Kane is one of them. And that institution, which ultimately reports to the Federal Department of Education in the U.S., is very focused on public accountability of education and, of course, making sure that the students receive the best education possible. Uh, in case you don't already know it, our university has many professionally accredited programs. We have well over 30 professional accrediting bodies, which uh, look very carefully at the learning outcomes in, in all of these programs. So let me say a few words about student learning outcomes and uh, why it's so important. Uh, many faculty, especially since we hire faculty from all over the world for Wenjo Kane, you may not be familiar with the American system. So I wanna talk a little bit about the connection between learning outcomes and assessment. Uh, first of all, we all know that it's the responsibility of faculty to assign a final grade in a course. And of course, how do you come up, how do you come up with that final grade? You would typically use rubrics. You would use a quantitative system to measure the student learning. You would then uh, summarize that across all the assignments and then ultimately have a final grade that, that you would decide upon and recognizing the student's achievement in that course. So the very fact that you went through that process means that you have assessed student learning. 
Now keep in mind that every course at the university has a university-wide course syllabi template. Those syllabi templates require learning outcomes to be articulated for every course. Now at the college level and university level, we look at those results very carefully and we use those data to inform how we continuously improve the institution. For example, do we decide to put resources towards one program that might be in more need of student service than another? Um, this is driven through a university-wide pro process that uh, Dr. Bousquet will say a few words about in a moment. The recommendations ultimately uh, come through the dean and then to my office through the University Planning Council, which is a very diverse body of uh, shared governance with the university. And then, of course, the president considers those recommendations, looking very carefully at all the assessment data. And then he makes final decisions to bring to the board of whether or not certain areas get more support based on the assessment data. And all of this is about continuous and, and institutional improvement. That's a very important point. It means that every year, just like when Joe Kane, you get better and better. Um, I, I'm privileged to add that I, I've been the chief academic officer since before when Joe Kane started. I was there when the very first freshman came in fall 2012. And I think we all recognize that every year they have continuously improved significantly. And of course, the way we know that is to be able to track the data. Okay, so this slide on shared governance, I'd like to pass it on to Dr. Brusquet. One of the things that, um, that, that we hold in high esteem is the process of shared governance at uh, Kane University and Wenzhou Kane. We have a university senate, and it is the principal agency for recommendations for our policies. Uh, the Senate has uh, multiple committees. They make re recommendations to the President on matters that span from curriculum and instruction to student affairs, faculty affairs, finance, and any other matter relevant to the institution. There are 30 senators that comprise the University Senate. Ten senators are elected every single year. Ten senators go off of the Senate. So the Senate is constantly replenished with individuals who are working toward a better future. The senators who um, make up the University Senate are not only faculty, hence we call it the University Senate. There are some administrators, there are staff, professional staff. So, so the University Senate is a, a, an important part of uh, participatory governance at Kane University, and uh, we're really quite proud of its long history. I have the privilege of chairing the University Planning Council, and um, I'm quite uh, proud of our achievements. We are responsible for writing, implementing, and assessing the strategic plans of Kane. Uh, of course, we do that by establishing measurable indicators of institutional effectiveness. So our last strategic plan for Kane University as a whole was written in 2013. We will begin to undertake the writing of a new strategic plan so that it will be ready for launch in the year 2020. Kane Ocean, our Toms River additional site, and Wenjo Kane University each have their own strategic plans. And so there are some members of the University Planning Council that are very uh, uh, concerned with making sure that the strategic plan is ongoing and is assessed at each one of those sites. It's my understanding that uh, that work is, is ongoing at Wenjo Kane University on assessing the outcomes of its past strategic plan and crafting a new one. The UPC is actually one of the most re uh, comprehensive representative 
uh, bodies, governing bodies at Kane University. We have membership that's pr that is appointed by the president. Every single division, so we're talking about academic affairs, enrollment management, university relations, and so on, uh, they are represented on the university planning council. The university senate makes appointments so that every college is represented on the university planning council, as is Wenzhou Kane University and Kane Ocean. Uh, all of our um, uh, unions have representation on the University Planning Council, and we also have students, undergraduate and graduate students, who are participants in the University Planning Council. So it is, um, it is another major branch of the shared governance that we have at Kane. Now, the Senate and the University Planning Council are, um, are very important aspects of, of, of an institution of higher education and one that is governed by the standards of the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. Um, but all U.S. institutions of higher education have accountability in upholding the legal rights of the students and faculty and staff of the institution. Title IX is a, uh, a law that came into effect in the 1970s. It prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex, and now there are many other protected categories. Um, this is important for federally funded educational institutions such as ours, and certainly the programs that we run. Another um, legal entity that we um, must adhere to uh, has to do with the laws governing the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA. And so we are uh, very concerned about our students and our staff and faculty and making sure that, that we um, make every aspect of the institution um, accessible for, for all of our constituents. We, of course, for, for many of you in the audience, you've been involved in search committees for the Wenjo Kane University community. You have been involved in search committees for faculty, et cetera. We are an equal employment opportunity institution. Again, this is a federal um, mandate, and so we very carefully adhere to all policies related to the Equal Employment Opportunity Act. For our students who are over the age of 18, which is the vast majority of our students, we must adhere to the policies of the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, and so we very carefully guard the privacy and information of our students, um, and uh, we are very careful about how we release information to family members, et cetera, when it comes to, um, to our students who are greater in age than 18. Okay, th thank you, Dr. Brisquet. So I want to say a few words now about uh, how we evaluate uh, the instructor's performance in the classroom. As uh, I'm sure, since many of you have already taught over this past year, you've had classroom observations. Uh, I want to emphasize that uh, Kane University, at Kane University, we're very proud that we are a truly student-centered institution. And this means that everything we do, all the way from the classroom up to the, the highest office, we focus on what's in the best interest of the students to ensure their, student, their own success and their ability to pursue the career of their dreams. We have, have adopted uh, an instrument that comes from the Educational Testing Service, or ETFs, which uh, uses surveys of how students perceive teaching in the classroom. 
And this is an important point because if a student tells us that they feel the faculty member is not communicating well, does not articulate the requirements of the course, then that's an issue that we have to take very seriously. I want everybody to know that this instrument that is referred to as SIR2 for Student Instructional Reports from ECS, there is currently over 8 million records from over 100,000 college courses that have been collected over a period of more than 30 years. So it, it is a, really the gold standard of uh, how one measures student perception of, of um, the teaching in the classroom. And of course, administration looks at performance holistically. Uh, for the lectures, we, we do performance evaluations based on excellence in teaching. Of course, a service to the university, which takes on many forms, particularly student advisement, academic advisement, service to their professional community, service to their local communities. This is all very important. And of course, for tenure track faculty, members, it's extremely important to show ongoing scholarship and research to show that they are advancing the knowledge in their fields, whether it's basic research or applied research. Uh, it's something that is, is very important to our own students' development. And again, I want to emphasize that when we do research at Kane, it is student-centered in the sense that the students participate with faculty mentors. We all know that students working with faculty mentors have much better su success outcomes. We see them with higher graduation rates, better retention, and very importantly, they have a better chance to get into graduate and professional programs. And uh, that's the, the point I have on the slide of the faculty portfolio review. Uh, I want to remind all the faculty that, uh, first of all, that I do review every single one of these personally. I spend a lot of time and effort to really think carefully about your professional growth. Uh, make sure that when you submit these portfolios that they have your current, current curriculum vitae, that if you're including publications that they represent peer-reviewed journals. Uh, you need to clearly articulate what your service is, uh, both, as I mentioned before, to the community and to your professional fields. And, uh, the university supports research and working with students in many ways, and one of them is travel. Uh, you should be aware that we have a web link with detailed uh, tr travel and voluntary overload guidelines with regards to additional teaching, whether it occurs over the winter or the summer session. I want you to take a look at that link, uh, and of course, if you have any questions, you can talk to your, uh, your administration, your deans, and, and also refer to my office. Again, going back to, to support, supporting student learning, uh, it's important that we focus on measurable learning outcomes. As I mentioned earlier about use of rubrics, uh, everyone should be aware that in addition to the rubrics that are used at the course level, the university has uh, writing rubrics that we use university-wide as well as oral presentation rubrics that we use across the board, and that's very useful for general education courses. I've also included a link for the, the uh, course syllabi templates. Uh, hopefully you're already aware of that. And I also want to mention just more on the side of advice, uh, having a lot of experience teaching courses myself, is that students need to understand what grades really mean. And by that I mean I often hear that students don't have a sense of what do I need to do to achieve an A or a B or, or whatever their, their goal is. It's important that we be objective and transparent in terms of how we measure that performance. And one of my favorite examples comes from a book called What the Best College Teachers Do, published by Ken Bain. And in that, he talks about providing examples of excellent work to the students from the first day of class. So for example, if you're doing a writing sample, you can say this is what an A paper looks like, and maybe this is what a B paper looks like. Um, and certainly with writing and a lot of other things that we do in the classroom, students need to have an opportunity to do edits and to do rewrites and to, and to do resubmissions. This is a very important process of learning. And of course, we need to teach our students the importance of academic integrity. The university has a very detailed academic integrity policy. It's very clear as to the expectations. 
Uh, we give students a, a chance to make mistakes uh, without severe consequences initially, and that's because we want them to, to learn from the process. Certainly in the American high schools, a lot of students don't necessarily have that opportunity, and we want to give that to them. And supporting student success. Uh, every one of us, and I include administrators, need to think about how to support student success in the best way possible. And this can occur through academic advisement, through academic support and mentoring. Uh, I still personally mentor students. I uh, think it's very important. Uh, certainly at Wenjo Kane, uh, you need to think about how to best contribute to the English Language Center. So important for your students. The uh, Student Act Academic Support Service Center, which is analogous to our Center for Academic Success, is very important for you to contribute to. And, and always remember student affairs and residents' life, uh, ways to collaborate with them, to form learning communities, um, with ha have students with similar majors working together. And students who ha have needs outside of academics think about use of counseling and so forth, which is very important. I know that uh, Dr. Yang is going to be uh, giving a presentation on the uh, current state of academic affairs at Wenjo Kane. I just want to say very briefly, as I mentioned, since I've been involved in the operation from the beginning in the fall of 2012, at that time we had four programs of study, and this past year we had 13 programs of study. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the first graduating class of 2016, we had spectacular success. More than two-thirds of the student pursued graduate study at some of the finest universities in the world. And we, we will be offering a new program, a Bachelor of Science in Biology, coming up this year, as well as some other programs that I'm sure Dr. Yang will be telling you about. I know this presentation was fairly quick, but I, I want to give an opportunity for some questions or comments. Uh, do know that Wenzhou Kane really is transforming global higher education. Uh, we all know that President Xi himself has uh, said, uh, has made commendations on the uh, progress of Wenzhou Kane. He has said that formally in various settings. Um, I've had the great privilege to present the work of Wenzhou Kane not only to former Secretary of State Kissinger, but also to Secretary of State Kerry. And uh, both of them have personally commended Wenzhou Kane on the progress that we've made. So it's something that we can all be very proud of. Um, we, we are, uh, I really feel strongly, part of the future of global higher education. And I'm so proud of the work that you do. And I want to thank all the faculty and staff for your contributions to make it a success. So uh, with that, uh, I'll take a couple of minutes for questions. And uh, Dr. Yang, do you have any comments? Yeah, so uh, we can take questions to Dr. Uh, Tony and Dr. Boske. And uh, uh, we have this microphone, this for sure. Do you have any questions? I'm, I'm sorry, we can't see the audience. Yeah, me too. Oh, well, Zhao Shanghao from uh, from the Middle Kingdom, um, I'm Gina Roach. I teach uh, in the English department. Uh, so we've met a couple of times when you came over. I think Jeffrey, perhaps just once. Um, it's more comment, observation, um, more than anything else. I'm sorry to have been coming in late. But I came in. Uh, so there are two th two things perhaps that I'd I'd like to just bring up. Um, here, yeah, um, as as we sit together as as a team, um, I I like the so so two things. One is on student evaluations, and the other one on shared governance. So on student evaluation, I speak as a teacher. Um, I think perhaps one of the things that we talk about here. Um, in the corridors and, you know, in the um, little groups where we meet is um, how vulnerable we are as teachers um, because we have the SETs in place. 
um, where we are also just allowed to give, you know, as many A's as we can. Um, I come from a background whereby the bell curve is institutionalized and, you know, it has, it has made it easier um, for us to, you know, uh, not do the thing where we feel that um, we're giving a lot of A's. Um, in, the, in the English department, for example, uh, I speak as someone who teaches both in the ESL and the capstone, right? So I traverse the entire uh, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 levels, um, whereby our teaching method is essentially uh, the process theory of writing, right? Um, our BA is essentially the BA writing. And so I feel that when we're giving those A's, it is basically because I help the students re rewrite those essays because we must go through a process. So it's very difficult for me to judge at the end how much of that is, you know, mine and how much of it is the fact that the students uh, took my advice, um, um, you know, uh, under consideration and they made the changes. So there's a lot of research on this end on feedback. So I, I just want to bring that up because I think it's something that we're talking about. Um, I feel that the grades are inflated on this end. I'm not comfortable with that, and also particularly because the uh, bell curve is not institutionalized. So that's, that's one thing. And I, I'm sure other people will, will comment on that as well. The other thing is on shared governance. I really like the concepts that you are bringing up, but perhaps because uh, we are here in, in the Middle Kingdom where you know, the discourse of politics here is very different from American democracy. Um, it's hard to not notice the combative nature between management and, and teaching that flows through the emails onto our side. Um, it's very difficult for those of us who come from, you know, not so combative um, administration. So it makes me doubt a little uh, what you are saying about shared governance. And I know I might be getting into trouble here or I should feel, you know, there'd be uncomfortableness in the room, uh, but it's the elephant in the room, right? So, um, like I said, I, I would like for us to, to speak as a team because this moment is so rare in the year. So I really appreciate that we are doing this and, and this is my response to to what you're saying. And as you say, you know, really, we are the, the, the list of students that go on to Ivy Leagues is impressive from our end. So I, I hope that, you know, you know you will, you'll be able to hear some of these uncomfortable things that we, we bring up in this team meeting. So that's all I have to say. Well, thank you. We certainly, um, I, I would just like to, to point out, so the communications that that we send to you or to our faculty here um, are really the same. So, so and and if if um, if perhaps we could be more sensitive, because certainly there is nothing that. Um, no messages that we want to convey that are combative in nature. So I just, I'd, I'd like to, to, to say that. So perhaps what we can do is be more sensitive to the fact that we only have the opportunity to speak to you at Wenjo Kane through email, and very rarely do we have this opportunity to speak um, in person or, um, or on Skype, so so I do appreciate that. Thank you, Gina. I'll just say I appreciate the feedback, and mm -hmm. uh, I do want everyone to know that that we have the shared goal of student success, plain and simple. So regardless of perceptions, always know that everything we do is is driven by supporting those students. So thank you for that. Okay. Is there any other questions? I have a microphone beside. Any others questions? No. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Tony, Dr. Bosque. We're going to uh, jump to the next presentation. Will be presented by Vincent and about university campus planning.
for background. Okay, thank you. Okay, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'm, I'm Vincent. Uh, I'm uh, teaching architecture here, but also I've been involved in campus planning for a bit more than a year and a half, uh, so since, since 2017. So this morning I, I will give you a short perspective on what has been done on the campus planning for like more than six years now. Uh, we start uh, building the university in 2012 and where is it going uh, in the next year to go and what's happening right now because you know everybody see a lot of change on the campus especially in 2018 with new buildings being built a lot of construction sites that came you know changing the whole uh, landscape of our, of our university so it's also to give you make you understand where we are now uh, and where we're going later okay go back there's 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 a hacker in my computer is someone moving that thing by itself? Okay, thank you. So, here we are. Okay, so this is our campus. Yeah, this is our campus land. Uh, so, you can see in the middle. Can I, can I point here? I don't point. So, in the middle, the 70 hectare uh, boundary is actually uh, the first phase of our campus, which is under construction and will be under construction until the 2020s. Uh, this uh, and our campus will reach about 8,000 to 10,000 uh, students within these boundaries. And then on the right, uh, there is a little village called Wang Village, which is also supposed to be part of our campus as well uh, for phase two. Uh, this is long-term planning. And on the other side of the of the of the boundary, you can see another uh, uh, red boundary that, that surround the mountain, which is also part of our campus on the other side uh, of the highway that goes, can I use this? No, okay, that goes uh, to the downtown of Winjo. That doesn't work, doesn't work. Okay, so anyway, the, the green lane, okay, that is on the left uh, of our campus, that is going to Wenzhou and I think it's gonna be open soon. Uh, we have all witnessed the construction of this road for more than a year now and prevent us to sleep for a long time as well. Nothing works. Oh, here we are. So this is, the, this is our land before any construction. So actually we can see it's, uh, it's an agriculture, agricultural area and it's, uh, drain with a lot of canal and water. And what we're doing now in terms of landscape is how to remodel the whole water system uh, in to, to be able to have a whole landscape plan that takes in consideration both water and the mountain surrounding, which is called Shanshui in Chinese. And our site is actually a very, it was, has been, it has been used uh, for many, many years, more than 2,000 year history, mainly for tombs, that we had village as well, because it's a, it's a place with very good, very good feng shui. So actually when Wenzhou government pick up the place for our university, they pick up one of the best place we could get for university, which is a place with all mountains around facing south and with a lot of water system inside. So these are tombs that were actually discovered a couple of days ago in our construction sites and that lasts from Qing Dynasty. So now it becomes heritage and we're gonna try to keep it, I guess. But it shows the long time history that uh, is actually uh, uh, our campus planet, our campus land, our campus site. So, so this, is, this is where our campus is located, you can see. So everybody knows Wenzhou now. So you have on the north, the big red line is the uh, Ojai, uh, no, yeah, Ojai Avenue that links the airport and, uh, and, the, uh, and the train station and also a kind of a boundary of the downtown of Wenzhou. We have Wenzhou University on the, on the east uh, and then we have our campus, you can see it's all surrounded by mountain on the west. Originally, the Wenzhou, our university was planned to be around Wenzhou University as well. 
and then they decided to use this this land to put our campus. So this is a picture of 2010, just before the start of the construction. So you can see there is no uh, uh, University Avenue, uh, which is uh, the university we have, and we have, and there is actually a village uh, where uh, we have the uh, the university now. Uh, on north of it, on the northwest of it, you have the kind of temple, the ancestral hall that we still have in our campus nowadays. Uh, that still belongs to the villagers. So, so here is 2012, beginning of the construction of university. It starts with the uh, with the construction of the when, with, with of the university street, which is right in the middle of the picture here. And then here it is, 2013. You have the first building being built, which are the general education hall and the training building on the south uh, south. Uh, west of the campus. The uh, uh, University Street is almost complete. 2014, uh, the uh, student housing are being built on north of the campus. And here it is, 2015. We have uh, a road that links all of this together, and we have almost a university running. So this was the first original master plan of uh, the university uh, awarded in 2012 to South China University of Technology. Uh, it, they were supposed to, they were awarded to build all the buildings uh, uh, and the whole master plan uh, by that time. Uh, the, so this is Ho Jintang who is the architect in charge of this. He's famous in China and very famous to build a lot of universities. So he was kind of a reference in his domain but of course, for our university, we don't want someone who built 2,000 university before and just be the last one. We want to have something different. And especially, we don't want to have this kind of master plan where all the buildings are the same and that are actually so it's just a, a Chinese campus with American facade. We want to have something more uh, integrate both uh, Chinese and American culture together. So this is actually, we have, uh, Two main parts, which are still uh, remain from the original master plan. We have uh, the, the bottom part, which is the general education hall, where we are now. Um, and then you have the training building. And some of the, uh, of the old uh, student housing on north of the campus, which was part of the original master plan. Okay. Okay, so this was the original master plan. It, it helps to understand why why the campus is looks a little bit like different in different places. Uh, you were supposed to have all the buildings different, uh, all the building the same, same style. So uh, the restaurant, uh, the general education buildings, all the college look the same, uh, including the student housing and, and all of it. So what happened is like in 2014. Uh, so all the all the all the campus planning and the architect got uh, uh, what let it go is what you call in English. Like they got fired, uh, and we had uh, it was the same time that our university witnessed the creation of the Micrograve College um, in in the U.S. And uh, there were three people called to uh, to the rescue of our campus planning. Uh, you can see two of them here on the on the screen on the left. On the no, right, no bottom, bottom, bottom. Uh, you have Michael Graves, uh, and then you have uh, Dean David Money, who has been in charge of the campus planning since 2015, uh, after Michael Graves passed away. So, <clears throat> for those who don't know who is Michael Graves, he's uh, one of the leading architects uh, of the 1980s and 1990s in the world, and of course one of the lead architects of the postmodern movement. Uh, in architecture, but he's also a very famous designer. He has been designing everything from uh, teapots to uh, medical uh, uh, accessories. So this is Michael Grace, uh, and he has been called not only to create the school of architecture, both uh, in in Keen USA and uh, Wenzhou Keen, but also first to plan the our building, uh, the the school of architecture and design. Uh, so it was planned, the first thing was uh, originally the plan of, uh, of the School of Architecture within the old master plan. So this was the uh, sketch of Michael Grace for the building. Interesting architecture that we 
don't, we won't have. We got punished because he was Michael Grace College. And then he was uh, called to uh, propose a new master plan for university. This is one of his early master plan that he has to uh, uh, use both the existing building, which was already built, and also propose more like an American style campus uh, for uh, the, uh, the university. So of course, when you call campus, we go back to uh, the University of Virginia campus, right, in, uh, uh, by Thomas Jefferson in 19th century, where you have, you know, the main academic hall, and then you have all the college on both sides. I have a main uh, uh, symmetrical organization. Okay, so this is this is the this is Virginia campus, University of Virginia campus, and this was Micrograce plan based on this. So you have the same organization, you have a symmetrical organization, you have the college, the main uh, uh, building on the main axe, and then you have the different college on both sides. And this was their final plan. So what is very interesting, this is Micrograce final plan for university. And you have basically most of the key elements of our campus nowadays. We have a central lake. We have, of course, a very symmetrical organization. We have a central lake where around the central lake you have the main college. Uh, they have the library, the School of Business, the School of Architecture and Design, and the Science Building, uh, or something like this. And then on both sides you have the General Education Building. And on the back you have all the housing building, and you have a great lawn uh, on the entrance of the college. So this was 2015 master plan. That is very similar to what we have now. So, <clears throat> so Michael Gray passed away. So uh, David Money was in charge of uh, of continuing this uh, this master plan. And uh, this is the, one of the key elements of the, from the Michael Gray plan that was kept was to have. Uh, this symmetric, symmetrical organization, the central lake, and four main buildings around, like an academic core for our campus. With you can see here on the left, you have the business school, which is which is already built, and then you have the uh, architecture and design building on the south part of the campus. And then in 2016, you had another company that had been called uh, to do the master planning of our campus which uh, won after a competition which was called EADG, and uh, they proposed a kind of a, 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 a wrong interpretation of, of the original micrograce plan, which was like this. It was kind of very monumental, very large scale, very Chinese kind of um, uh, 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 administrative uh, cities that you could see you know, anywhere in China. So this is where David came uh, on board again, so they had they had a, had a workshop with the ADG, with the designer of ADG on site, uh, in order to uh, redesign the whole campus uh, planning based on Michael Gray's plan, but also uh, about how to organize different spaces in between the buildings. So this is my dear dean, like is working so hard, and then this is the uh, some. Uh, uh, some of the uh, other working documents. So you still have the key elements that you have your, in the micrograce plan, but you can start to have more subspaces, not only the main space that were along the main axis, but you have different spaces in between the buildings that start to appear to have uh, different skills in the, in the master planning. So this is uh, still Dean David Money with uh, Dr. Tony Jung that everybody knows on the back, who's in charge of the campus planning here, and the landscape designers. Um, and also we have, uh, we, I think it has been doing a lot, lot of, uh, of planning since 2016 and 17. So uh, David Money will give a lecture about this campus planning in Xi'an University tomorrow. And also had a lecture last year about this uh, campus planning that is very specific, uh, not only in China, but in the world, to have this, uh, this uh, joint effort of designing a, a Sino-American campus. So because, because actually the whole campus is, is founded by Chinese, uh, all the money comes from the China side, and we're trying to provide also uh, an American feeling to the university. So it's, it's really a, a joint work between uh, both the Chinese side uh, with uh, Dr. Tony Jung and uh, the, the American side with uh, uh, Dean David Mooney. 
This was a presentation last year uh, in the AIA in Shanghai, American Institute of Architecture. And this was the final plan of EADG uh, with, uh, of course, a lot of uh, support from Davy Money. So this is a general organization of the building. So you still have the symmetrical organization. You have the three parts, uh, the, what they call the local life on the back, where you have student housing, faculty housing, restaurants, and, uh, and what they call local life. You have the campus heart with the four main buildings around. And, uh, and a campo on the, on the left, which is actually already finished, and the getaway park, which is the uh, representation space of our university. So here we are, still the four main buildings, a central lawn, a great lawn in the entrance, with two axes that are bringing uh, the entrance space and the central space together. More rings and big rings, a circulation, a road circulation around that you see on the right uh, for the cars and the pedestrian uh, circulation inside the building. So actually when everybody's, every, all the circulation is finished in the center of the campus, students will only use the pedestrian circulation in the center of the campus and won't have to use the road that the car are using now or the little uh, bus. So we have the entrance. The American wall is actually not done yet. The Chinese wall which won't be done. And we have the four bridges. Actually, we're going to have three bridges that links um, the academic part of the, of the uh, which uh, links the entrance part of the university to the, the core, which are actually under construction right now. So a key element of our campus is uh, all the spaces that we have in, inside, uh, between the buildings. So uh, the big jump that had been done from the original uh, uh, master plan to now is not only to provide main representational spaces like the P or H that you have here. The P is the Great Lawn, which is the main space of the campus, and H is the Central Lake, which is not built yet, but it's going to be built soon. It's going to be the main space uh, of our campus, but also to provide a lot of subspaces uh, between the different buildings, uh, like the G that you have on the left, which is a plaza that is now finished uh, between the, 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 uh, the, the business school and the, and the gym. And also, we're going to have a, a variety of different spaces, uh, both uh, plaza and gardens, uh, with different scales all around the campus. So, of course, the main reference for this is, uh, is Princeton University, where you have a, a large variety of landscaped spaces in between the buildings. And each space will have their different uh, uh, identity and different scale. That's what very interesting. So of course, and then you have visual links between the different spaces. So that's what we're trying to do here on our campus. So the, the, the main, the main lawn of, of Princeton that links the university to the to Princeton uh, Village, and that we're going to have something similar in our campus with a great lawn in front of the architecture and design building that's going to link to Keene Town. So this is some example. This is uh, on the left. Uh, you have the uh, entry garden of the of the canteen. That is one kind of space. On the right, you have the campo, which is a plaza uh, that is almost finished with a fountain in the middle. You're going to have a meeting garden later. You have the large ones. You have a variety of different uh, space with different scales. So this is the planning uh, of all the buildings. So we don't see much. Um, <clears throat> so in the middle, what is written 2019 is actually under construction. Uh, if we start from the bottom, you have the central lawn that is actually part of the architecture and design building, which is just on top of it. Uh, so from bottom to top, you have great lawn and the architectural building, which are under construction. Then we have the central lake and the student learning activity center or the library, which, gonna sh which should be, uh, you know, start to build any, any time, probably in 2019. And then on the back, uh, you have the student housing phase two, which is actually under construction, and the first part will be uh, finished by 2019. Uh, on the left, on the uh, um, west part of the campus, you have, of course, the G general education hall that is built, uh, the, the, um, uh, the business school and the gym, which finished to be built, the student housing. And then on, on the east part of the campus is something planned for after 2020, or probably to after 22 as well. So this is the circulation, we talked about it. 
You see the main uh, main academic buildings and, and housing buildings that I just talked to you before. Um, this is the general landscape plan that was planned in 2016 and it's basically is going to be the same uh, as we looking. So the central lake with the four academic buildings around. The, the local life uh, with the, the student housing and faculty housing together. A little bit quicker. So the central, uh, this is under construction. The central loan that's going to be the main space, uh, uh, the main representation space of, of our campus with the entry. Large loan, this is under construction. Uh, and then the central space with the four academic buildings. So this is the latest uh, design of, of the main buildings that are actually under construction. We have on the right, we have the Gohokai uh, uh, building, which is a school of architecture and design. On the back, we have the uh, student learning activity center, the library, and the central uh, lake. That you don't understand the design of the uh, business school if you don't know that's going to be a big lake facing the atrium. So this is a key element in um, in our campus planning. This is the lake that should look like this or better like this. And then the local life, which is actually under construction. Housing. And in the plan of EAGG and the, and the plan of our university as well, uh, we, we, we collaborate to work on the Teen Town project, which is actually an Ojai project, Ojai district, the local district of our university project that should uh, work in collaboration with our university. So Teen Town is on the, on the bottom here. Uh, which is supposed to be like an, kind of a cosmopolitan uh, city for uh, local people. This is Keen Town planning. Um, this is actually, uh, it's long-term planning. So we have no idea if it's gonna look like this. Let me just skip this. Right, Keen Town. So this is the building which are built. Uh, this was the first phase. So general education hall and dining hall. This is what uh, has been finished this year in 2018, a lot of things. Of course, the main building finished this year is the College of Business and Public Management, CBPM. Here we are, you know, all know this. And of course, what is being under construction and what is being finished right now is all the landscape around the CBPM, okay? The, all the connection that's gonna have between the general ed education hall, uh, the, the college of uh, the CBPM, and also between the CBPM and the gym that you have on the right. So all the public space, all the landscape is being done and almost uh, almost uh, finished. And every, everything has been uh, done and surveyed by Xingu, a landscape designer, which is here. And uh, she has been working very hard for the last year to be able not only to have a nice building on the CBPM, but to have a nice surrounding for the CBPM. So it's almost finished now. This is a landscape around, lo along the river that is almost complete. And this is um, the park which is facing the CBPM with a big uh, outdoor amphitheater facing the campo and then uh, something more natural uh, for the uh, West Park. So this is almost finished. Um, you're gonna have the tree planted in the park uh, by, this, uh, by this summer. So when you come back in fall, everything's gonna be finished around, including all the landscape along the river uh, that you have on the, on the left part here. There is. So this is, this is gonna be the, four, the three main bridges that's gonna link the CBPM to the general education hall. Actually, they're almost built, but you don't have road on the other side of the river. So uh, once the road is finished on the other side of the river, then we're going to have a connection between the CBPM and the General Education Hall that's going to shorten very much the walk that is from faculty housing to, uh, to the General Education Hall. So this is faculty housing that you all know, I guess. Also, is a very nice landscape work of uh, Xingu, our landscape designer. And this is... Uh, our campus in Emily, this building, which is very weird. But it's the gym. It's going to look awesome from the inside, right? So this is the main building of our campus. 
this is the Gehekai building, named after the donators. We had a very generous donator for university who founded 90% 90 90 of this building. So that's why he's, uh, we named the building after it. This is the School of Architecture and Design. And it looks like this. It's the main gate of, uh, it's the main facade and the main gate of our campus. That's why you have this large gate, right? Facing the Great Lawn. So this is the facade facing the Great Lawn. And this is the facade that is facing the main lake, right, in the center. So you have a large atrium inside that's going to face the lake the same way you have a large atrium in the CBPM that is, that's going to face the lake as well. And same in the, in the slack. So this is going to be, this is the main atrium of the, of the building. So it's under construction. This is a building that you see right when you enter. It's raising floor after floor. Uh, right now, so you can see, you, you're gonna, if you stay next year, you're going to see this uh, being completed very quick. This is a large atrium that connects all the different floors together. You're going to have a cafe and it, an atrium. So this is the construction. Actually, this was taken uh, a couple of weeks ago, so it's not totally updated. Now you actually it's raising uh, much faster than this. So yeah, this was as well a couple of weeks ago. Now you already have, they're, they're reaching the first floor already, the second floor already. And the second building that probably you see every day going to work is actually the students' housing phase two. Uh, this is the main, the first building, is the building A, that's going to be completed next year. And, and then you're going to have also at the same time being done, but it hasn't started yet, is uh, all the other building that's going to close, is going to be the back wall of our, our campus. So this is the under construction already. You see it every day. Actually, so well, actually the structure is complete now, and this, they're going to start the facade soon. Yeah, this is more the current status of uh, of, of the student housing. So this, this is going to be finished next year. You can see it's going very quick. And you know, next to this faculty housing, we're going to have this kind of nice landscape and and this uh, uh, sport ring that actually can be shared both by faculty and students. And then the building that we're all waiting and we don't know when they could start, but it should start soon, at least uh, maybe next year, last, is the Student Learning Activity Center, the, the Slack, which is a library. And it is also facing the lake. And it's, uh, yeah, it, you have also a large atrium that is, that is facing the lake. So you have all these four main buildings that are looking to each other and looking toward the main central lake. We're going to have a lot of public spaces here, it's really for students to interact and to work there. It's going to be the main, uh, as it's going to be the central sport spots for uh, the students uh, here. So this is the, some rendering of the Slack inside. You have a lot of, of interact, a lot of different kind of public spaces uh, to work, you know, two or three students together, work a whole class together. Uh, so you, they don't need all the space that you have in the GH anymore. And this is a welcoming center that is kind of copy of uh, the Keen Hall in Keen USA. Uh, we're still waiting to have the money to build it. Uh, it's part of the, the Keen, it's going to be the interaction between Keen Town uh, on the south and our university. So now we're wait, it's going to be the, also the administrative hub of our university. So it, this should be built, it was planned to be built in 2018 or 2019. And it also links, you know, our campus here and, uh, and the Keene campus in, in Union. And here is something much more speculative. The design has been done, but it's a, a sports center that should be built after 2022 with a swimming pool. So we're still waiting for the money for the buildings. So if you know any big donator, we can have a, a stadium. And that's all. Thank you very much. You have questions? <laughs> uh, we we all the building are uh, uh, following the local regulation. 
um, the Chinese regulation in terms of architecture. So both uh, for fire regulation, handicap regulation, uh, each all follow the Chinese law. So it's not as strict as the uh, as the American law. I know for the handicap law, it's we but we're trying to improve and have something better than the regular uh, Chinese university laws. Uh, I know we have been we've been struggling actually <laughs> with with the campus planning team to have more accessibility. They have some, they, every space is accessible, but not that easy accessible, so we're trying to improve this uh, with campus planning. Yes? Seem to be like steps? Actually, the, the steps is, you, the main road, I mean, if I, if I go back very quick, uh, the main road, Will be without steps. The step is actually to go to the along the along the sh the, the the shore of the of the. Yeah. Who is? So, no, somebody with a cart or wheeled vehicle. Can no, no. Some, uh, of course, of course. The the. So here we are. You can see the actually the yeah. Please don't touch my PPT. Thank you. Uh, so you can see the the the. The, to go from one place to another, from one side to another, it's flat or with slope. The stairs is only to, to go along the river. So if you want to walk around the river, it's not, it's not a place you need to go. It's just some kind of landscape space, a space that we're trying to do here. Uh, something but, like, but like, if you, if you're, if you, you're, you know, you have challenges with steps and you can't go along the river. Yeah, but there's not much things to do over there. I don't think there will be anyone. Yeah, what if your there. friend is there? I don't. <laughs> Then ask them to go up. <laughs> if you want to take a romantic stroll. Actually, the there's road. a ramp. I, we, 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 when we designed this, we, there's a ramp going down. The thing is, the ramp doesn't connect to anything. So. Thanks, we're, Vincent. We, we, we're working on it. Thank you, Vincent. When, when we have a, a generous donor that gives us the money for the, for the state sports center, the large sports center, the, right now the, the small sports center that we have only have uh, indoor uh, basketball and and have like a small gym and space for yoga or thing like that. So uh, we need money for the large sports center that will have uh, the football field and, and uh, a swimming pool. Sure, thank you. We're waiting for it. Other oh, library. Give me back control. Okay, here we are. This is the library. So uh, it's going to have a lot of uh, of eh, of different spaces in the library, including a lot of uh, self-study spaces for the students. So it's actually before being a library, it's a student uh, center. But, oh, the location is here. It's one of the four buildings around. Around the lake, so here it is in the in the north part, the square square building here. This is the library. So this is the CBPM. This is our building, the architecture building, and this is going to be the science building. Any other questions? Uh, the, we, the original plan is to have more faculty housing. Right now, we don't have money. <laughs> and, and, and actually, they're, they're looking for. Uh, uh, I mean, last year was Phil was still here. We were looking for an alternative solution uh, because uh, the, the original money for the faculty housing was provided by the uh, Wenzhou City, and we used the whole envelope of the Wenzhou City. So now we have to find our own money that we don't have, so either we sell our buildings to build new ones, uh, or actually the, the other solution is to get some housing in the, in the village around. Uh, so right now there's no uh, final solution for this, but no, no, new faculties, no, no, no new faculty housing is planned in the next year to be built. Okay, thank you very much.
Thank you, Winston. I really believe the WKU not only offer the world class education, but also a world class campus. About like four or five years, WKU has the most beautiful campus in China, I believe. Okay, so, uh, oops. Do I have control of that? Can I have, can I give the control back to me? Okay, uh, so I, I'm going to give a, a review. I'm going to give an overview of WKU academic affairs in this. Okay. All right. Now I got again the control back. So uh, this academic year 2017 2018, we have 9,000 of 1,900 students. Actually, the 1,903 students, an increase by 315 students compared with last year. We offer 904 sections class, a total of 259 courses, which is including 44 new courses compared with last year. The four-year graduate rate is pretty high, so 93% for this graduating class. And overall, overall retention rate, that, that means from freshman, sophomore, sophomore junior, and, and senior, that's 93.2%. And among the 381 graduate for this class, 73 students graduate with quality, and 97 was magna quality, and 64 was summa quality. So overall, uh, all those graduate rate is 61.4%. We have 98 faculty member this academic year, uh, 37 tenure or tenure track faculty. Among the 17 faculty members who will now be returning, nine resigned and eight was not reappointed. So the faculty retention rate for this year is 82.7%, uh, which is higher than the last year, which is 71.1%. On the March 30th, 2018, the Bachelor Degree Conferred eval Evaluation Panel visit WKU, as we all know, right? The visit consists of you know, the class observation, the faculty, student interview, inspection of the fac university facility, and also the program level uh, report and university level report. Um, after visit, the panel highly commended the modern higher education concept, philosophy, and high-quality curriculum education resources introduced from King, and also solid international faculty team and university mission of striving to find different paths for different students to achieve academic success. And so based on that, the panel concluded that WKU possess the qualification conferring the bachelor degree of the six academic program, including economics, marketing, global business, computer science, English, and graphic design. At the same time, the panel does indicate some weakness that needs to be addressed. For example, development of academic programs in balance. As we know, 70% of students actually enroll in a CBPM. Uh, and the faculty qualification in some academic program needs to be further improved and a relatively high faculty turnover rate, and student internship development management could be further improved. I'm going to discuss that in a, in a reflection on academic fair for this year. And teaching and management assessment quality control system needs to be continuous, continuously improved. And university continue to expand the teaching facility, right? For example, like Bloomberg Lab is newly home in the CBPM. Uh, lab set up cost was 650,000 Chinese yen, and any usage fee is 500,000 Chinese yen. We have three biology labs, a, a chemistry lab, three computer lab, architecture studio, and language studio. Okay. The total area lab is 1,120 square meters, and the total cost is 4.5 million Chinese yen, and we have 516 fully functional equipment with total value of 8.5 million Chinese yen. And if WKU faculty research producti productivity continue to be stronger, and this academic year alone, faculty received six external research grants, a total amount of 
uh, $381,500, Chinese yen, sorry, it's not dollars. And the faculty member had published 60 peer-reviewed articles. And some of those articles published very prestige journals. For example, Dr. Wong's research paper was published in Frontiers in Microbiology and Bioinformatics. We, I, I'm in this field as well, so I know the both journal, leading journal in the fields. And more, yes, give it a grand applause. And more impressively, the students are the first authors of both journal articles. That's the most exciting things. And also, university continue to encourage and engage students in a research projects sponsored and mentored by our faculty member. Uh, we all know university provide student partnering with faculty or student partnering with staff research program, right? So in this academic year, 25 SPF sponsored projects are funded with total amount of 526,000 Chinese yen. And last year, it's only 12 sponsored projects funded for a total amount of 320,000 Chinese yen, so almost double. And, you know, I, I believe most of your faculty uh, participate the third Student Research Day on April 18th of this year. So we have 192 students presented 70 projects, right, in, on the Student Research Day, and comparing of 90 students participated last year. So here is actually the graph showing significant growth of student presenter in the past three years. Right? In 2018, 192 students presented, not 70 projects. And student and faculty members co-authored 34 research articles this academic year alone. And students gave 21 research presentation in national and international fashion conferences. I just give you some examples of student achievement. We know actually there are so many awards our students have received in the past year. So we tapped to supervised by Dr. Winato on the per first prize in 2017, Microsoft uh, Imagine Cup Competition. So is Dr. Win Winato is here? Okay. okay. Are, yeah, give her. Thank you very much. And a group of students actually advised Dr. Meng. The Dr. Meng's here, right? And received an award for National Undergraduate Student Innovation Training Project Award. And we have actually two students, not only Lo Minghui, but there's another student attend the United Nations General Assembly to discuss the climate change, other public affairs, was expert around this world. Here is also just an example of the grad, prestigious graduate, graduate school, the graduate class 2018 has been admitted. Right, this by no means a complete list. You can see there's so many national, uh, international ranked universities, not only ranked the top notch university, and compare in, in the previous year, most students only apply for university in the United States, and uh, England, Hong Kong, but this year, you can see the profile become much more diversified, was the, the top notch, the graduate school in different countries in Europe as well. So uh, like Dr. Tony mentioned, you know, we have four new programs offered in the fall 2017, including uh, management and architecture studies, psychology, mathematical sciences, and a total of 117 students were enrolled to the four new program in the September 2017. In the, in the coming semester, coming fall semester, we, we offer a new major, the Bachelor of Science Biology with Cell and Molecular Biology option. The plan student enrollment is 25. At the same time, there's a four new undergrad program plan to be offered in the next fall, including Bachelor of Science in Earth Sciences, Bachelor of Science in Communication, and a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Interior Design, and a Bachelor in Industrial Design. So we are now putting together applications. Application will be submitted by end of July 2018. Approval decision made by Department of Education of Zhejiang Province in November 2018, and the final decision by MOE will be made in March 20, 2019. So now, I, I, I like to address some of the challenges. You know, I know the university has accomplished great achievements 
in terms of student success, success and faculty success, right? But we do actually face some urgent challenges. Okay, the first in balanced development academic program, like like I just mentioned, we have over 70% students actually enrolled in the school business. Of course, you know we want to develop program in all college. We have four college or all college, but the university actually probably want to develop several, several strong science program or health profession program to gain academic, academic reputation. And, and acquire strong grant support because this large amount of grant money actually in the science. And we don't have graduate program. We already offer 12 undergraduate program with 14 uh, concentration or options, but we have to offer a graduate program. So in today's uh, board of director, I'm going to propose to offer the graduate program because the MOE required voting on the board of director on you know, whether or not WQ is authorized is to offer the graduate program. So we, we, we actually the plan to develop a graduate program in a master a MBA, a master business administrations, and TSO, and biology, and probably computer science, and also architecture. Probably we project in the 2021-22. Stability of faculty team is always most important for ensuring course offering. And, and the healthy growth academic program. So in order to stabilize faculty team, we, the university should continue to provide faculty continuous support for teaching and research to develop career at WKU. And also university should plan to build a primary, middle, and high school uh, to attract faculty who have children with, with schooling age. And we also help the faculty establish social connection to be rooted in, into the local communities and uh, I talked with uh, Mr. Shah from HR, and he promised he will provide one-stop service for faculty. And also, I think we should probably establish an office in international education to provide service for international faculty. The other challenge is universities should provide strong support to faculty to apply and acquire external research grants. Uh, again, this year we have six. Actually, we could get more in the future years. And, and the, my recommendation is, you know, we should hire some Chinese researcher to help our faculty member translate our research proposal and transform our research, research proposal in the format format be much more accepted by the funding agency in China. And also, we should provide a training workshop for writing grants for our junior faculty. The director office assessment has been vacant for a long time. You know, so we definitely need a strong leaders to enhance assessment and also teaching quality control of WKU. I also hope that we can establish office in institutional research to perform institutional and comparative analysis to uh, support evidence-based decision making and planning. And the student internship development management need improvement. That actually is one of the weakness pointed out by the panel of bachelor degree conferral panel. Uh, I think we need to actually continue to establish partnership with industry in Zhejiang province. And for every official internship agreement, we should actually explicitly state the responsibility or rights of intern students as a hiring and entities. And the university should provide continuous support to provide uh, the, the high impact learning experience for students, especially studying abroad experience. So I think we should develop new mechanisms to provide financial academic support to students to encourage WK students to study at the Kane University. At the same time, in order to internationalize the campus, we should take a more aggressive strategy to recruit international students. So at this just show us, you know, the, the master plan. Uh, we give some some concept of what a building will be constructed. So what a building is building the College of Science Technology. So we have uh, many buildings already has a committed funds to those buildings, but the building of science technology is one of the buildings that don't have any dedicated funds. So I believe concert effort has to be coordinated to write a proposal for the cre creation of labs research space, office, and also the classroom uh, for, for building this uh, science technology building. Uh, I think it's very important to have this proposal applying for, for the grant support 
for the municipal government and also private donors. Okay, so that's my overview. Academic fear are some reflections and challenge. So now, take, what time is it? Is uh, how many minutes do we have? Minutes. Okay. Uh, can you go back to your fourth slide, fifth slide, something like that? Yes, on the fifth, fourth slide. How far? Uh, the previous one. <laughs> previous slide. No, no, the one that you were saying, the majors that we are offering here, because you, you were mentioning economics and then you had uh -huh. Yes, finance right, and account. Right. So, so, is economics a major? Yes. It's or is it just a translation from Chinese? And yeah, that's the Chinese it? degree, right? If the Chinese okay. degree will be economics, but American Because degree. we want to propose to create a major in economics here. So, are we a major or not? Not, right? Yeah, so, you know, uh, I so think what's, that what's the deal with that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's harder to offer, for example, like accounting degree in China called a restricted degree. So we had to put in the category economics. We offer economics, economics degree for China. So the business school is offering an economics degree and we belong to the liberal arts? Can, can you repeat again? Economists belong to the liberal arts school. So economics is offered by GBPM. Yeah. But so just that is all the Chinese accreditation system. Thing, okay, you know? so this yeah. is the Chinese degree. Right, right. So that's that's regular. So we are required. misplaced, probably. Yeah. So that's kind of confusing. I understand. Right. So that's the reason I put okay. the finance accounting. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? So Eric, you know how small we are here in WKU, and when we hear rumors, we want to clarify. So I heard a rumor last night that only global business have been given the right to uh, confer the degree. So can you please confirm that what you have written there is actually true, that English, I was very upset. I, I want English to also have been, you know, they were qualified to give English. A WKU can give the degree to English, right? Yeah, we have a conferral rights. Yeah, so, so it was just a rumor, right? Rumor, rumor. <laughs> Any, any other questions? Yes. Uh, why haven't uh, Why haven't they, for the faculty and student convenience, put a um, snackette so uh, that students could get something to eat while they're um, in the in, in the business building or uh, the uh, the um, uh, GEH building, instead of always going over to the um, cafeteria, so that the time that they're closed, they can have something to eat. Uh, they don't have handrails in a lot of these places. Is that because of the Chinese law? That, that, uh, because even at the graduation place, they didn't have uh, adequate handrails. Oh, I, I do know there's a law actually regulated, regulated that. You know, so we probably can talk about you know, the Dr. Jenga, Tony Jenga, about this. Okay, uh, if we know the uh, faculty area doesn't have handrails. Yeah, I, I was not aware of that, so I never actually paid attention to that. But we can actually communicate with Dr. Jenga about okay. that, yeah. Any questions? We, we actually plan to start offer next year. Yes. Yeah. 2019, four. Okay, thank you very much for, for being here. Thank you. Dr. Tony, are, are you still there? Yes, we are still here. Yes, I was just gonna wish everyone a uh, good day with PDD and the upcoming board meeting. Okay, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your presentation. Both Dr. Tony and Dr. Bosquet, thank you. Thank See you. you. Bye.
Next time I'll see you in Wenchow. Oh, yeah. <laughs>